What's up everybody, Camro here, and welcome to part 34 of my How to Make a Pokemon Game tutorial series. In this episode, we are going to be looking at map files and how you can restore your maps even after you delete them. We're also going to be looking at how to plug in maps from other Pokemon games and use them in your game. It's a pretty neat little trick. With that said, let's get into it. So, for example, let's say that you've deleted one of your starter maps, or all of your starter maps. I reference these a lot in my tutorials, so if you have deleted these, that could be really bad for you. I also highly recommend you don't delete them. Um, so, let's say you've deleted the game corner. Let's take a look at it. It's map 13. So we've deleted, but let's, let's delete it right now. Boop! Delete game corner. So this is one thing that kind of sucks. If you go and you make a new map now, it fills that 13 slot. So if you've deleted the map and then continued developing your game, odds are you've made a pretty cool map on map 13 and you don't want to replace map 13 now. So let me break it down for you and show you exactly what you want to do. So what I've done is I've actually downloaded a, um, a default, like a, like a fresh Pokemon Essentials version, unedited, unaltered. It's right here. So one thing that you can do actually is go into the data folder and scroll down and you can see all these map files. These are what we're going to be working with. These are actually pretty flexible in how you can use them. And there's all these maps that came with the default version of Essentials all the way up to 75. But remember, we deleted the game corner, which was map 13. So there's two ways that we could go about putting it into our game. One way is safe and pretty cool. And one, the other way is not as safe, but very fast. So map 13 right here, what we can do is just go in and copy it and then go back to our game folder, which is right here. And right now I'm just going to paste it here. I don't want to paste it into the data folder yet because I want to talk about my two methods. The first method is we throw this into data and just overwrite the old map 13, which will make this map disappear essentially. So this is why it's bad if you've been working on your own game for a while, because you don't want to overwrite the maps you made. If this map is just empty, then we have no problem overwriting it. But if we don't want to overwrite it, here's another method. What you can do then is go into your game and then do right click new map and then find the number there. The way that it does is it always does the highest available number. So since I have a ton of maps, the highest one now is 90. So I can make a new map and that is map 90. And then what we can do, oh wait, so let me, let me go open it. Where did I make it? Oh, there it is. So now we have map 90, and then what we can do is rename this to be map 90, and then let's make sure that our game is saved, and then you can close your game editor, drop it into data, and replace map 90. So what you did was you made a new empty map, and then you replaced the new, the new empty map with your map. So now if we go open our game again, map 90 is now the game corner. Check it out. Ta-da! It's map ID 90, and it's the game corner. And one thing that's really cool about using this method is it maintains all of the events, all the event logic. Everything still works, which is pretty great, because whenever I point to the default Essentials maps, I'm really just talking about their event logic. So, yeah, this is a really great way to get maps back if you've deleted them. So, like I said before, what you can do is just drag them in and replace your current one, or you can make you can make an empty one and then overwrite that empty one. And it's really flexible because you can just rename the file and then drop it in and everything just works. One thing you want to do to make sure that this works, though, is save and then close your RPG Maker and then do the file swap and then reopen it. So, that's pretty cool because it, it allows us to restore our maps from the base version of Essentials. But it gets even cooler because you can do this with other Pokemon games you're working on, and you can even do it with other Pokemon games that have been made by someone else. I definitely don't recommend going and just copying all the maps from someone else's game. Go make your own, honestly. But like, check it out. I'm, I'm making Pokemon Paradox. You know, I worked on that. I'm working on a pretty cool update for it. Oh, <laughs> stay tuned. But um, I'm gonna copy map 82 from it because I think that was a cool map. So I just went into my Pokemon Paradox folder, into the data, and go to map 82. And then I go into my game, then I paste it in here. Then I go back into my RPG Maker. I, I'll just click down here so that I want to make a new map. This is a little bit where it is. Then I make a new map. So this new map is empty, and that's 91. So now map 91 is empty. 
save and close. Now I rename this to be map 91 and then I drop it into the data. No, that's the audio folder. Ah. Okay, but if you're not inept, what you do is you drop it into the data folder. You replace the map 91 there. And then I go and open the game. And now I'm using map 91. So what you'll see here is there are some uh, tiles in that I don't have because uh, I was editing the tile sets or I was editing the events. So if you're using art in one game, then you also need to make sure that you put that art into your other game because it'll tell you that you're missing art though. Essentially, this was a tile that I tried to use in Pokemon Paradox, but I don't have that tile in this game. So yeah, so that's pretty cool. So I just took a map from Pokemon Paradox. So there is some missing art though, some missing stuff, but the general map layout is all there. So that's pretty neat. And another thing you can do is take a map from any other game that's been published, as long as it has a data folder also. So I'm going to the, the masterpiece, the critically acclaimed, basically the best fan game ever made, Pokemon Whack. And I, this one has its data folder with it when you download it. So you can go into the data folder, scroll down and look at all these map files. I'm gonna copy map uh, 300 because this is Sparta. Uh, so let's do a new map. Map 92. So now map 92 is empty. Save. Close RPG Maker. Go back to our game folder. Paste it. And then rename it to 092. You have to have three digits. So you can't just do map 92. You have to do map 092. So here we have map 92. We drop it into our data folder. We replace the one, the one that's empty that's in there. We open our game up. Boop. There we go. Now we're using map 92 from Pokemon Whack. So yeah, that's a pretty cool trick that you can do with your map files. So now if you ever delete your base essentials maps, then you, what you can do is you can go download the uh, essentials online, just, you know, on the wiki here. And um, then you can do that trick to put the maps back in. So that's pretty neat. And if you ever need to be, if you never, if you ever need to figure out exactly which map is which, then what you can do is you can just close your RPG maker and then go into the um, the base version of Essentials that you downloaded. Then you can open that up, and then from there you can browse all the maps. And then you can right-click on them and do map properties if you want to see the ID. The ID also shows up in the bottom right, but, you know, there's multiple ways that you can do these things. So yeah, that's a pretty neat little map trick. And one thing that I want to make very clear is that this map trick is pretty cool, not only for being able to restore maps from the base essentials, but if you're working on your own fan game, what you should be doing is making copy backups of your game, so that way you can potentially restore maps from that as well. So like, let's say you're, wa you're making your own game, you've made a ton of progress on it, it's going pretty good, but then you feel like, oh, it'd be really cool if I redid this map. Then what you can do is you can make a backup of your game, and then from there, you can make the tweaks to your map. And if you don't like the tweaks, what you can do is you can just replace that map file with the old map file and boom, you've got your map back. So that's pretty neat. What this trick also allows you to do is share map files across the internet. So if you are working on a really cool event that you want to show somebody, you can just send that event on a map file to them and then they can use that technique that I described to put that event in their game. So this makes it really cool to collaborate online with others when you're working on fan games because you can share map files. It's really cool. But yeah, I hope this video helped you out. Um, I plan to stream more sometime soon, so follow me on Twitch there at Thundaga Stream. Uh, I tweet about video games, so hit me up on Twitter and you can ask me questions. I do my best to answer them. I'm sorry if I don't answer everything. My bad. I'm a busy boy. I'm trying to do things. But yeah, like I said before, Oh yeah, Thundaga Discord, there's that too. Man, I really need to be more active on that. I'm dropping the ball, boys. But yeah, <laughs> I hope this video helped you out. This is a cool little map trick. And um, I hope to see you guys next time. Have a good day. And uh, best of luck in your future Pokemon making endeavors. Bye-bye now.